Hey guys, how's it going? Solo back here with another daily update video. And you know, another just kind of good day because my brokerage for two days in a row now was having some major issues, really having a hard time just logging in to the desktop application. Fortunately, my mobile app was working on and off, but again, you know, delayed data just wasn't really working as smoothly as it usually does. I was able to get into some trades, so I will talk about them in a few minutes. But yeah, just kind of a bummer day, you know. It's really difficult when you're trying to spend your money and your broker doesn't let you do it. But let's get right into it. Looking at the big board here, you know, kind of an up and down day in the market today, right? Big tech in terms of Amazon. Look, Amazon up 4.1%, Google 26 but Microsoft, Apple, Facebook were kind of sideways. Semis were kind of hit today. AMD down 0.9%. And that was actually good for me, which I'll talk about in a second. Micron, you know, another day of it just in the red. It's down to $44. Micron was down 1.8% today. At some point, you know, this sell-off has to stop. So I don't know. I don't know when the bottom is, but I think when Micron hits bottom for a long-term play, it's going to be pretty juicy, not for premiums, but juicy for stock appreciation. NVIDIA was actually down today. So NVIDIA actually has earnings pretty much as I'm speaking. So we'll have to see how it looks after hours and also where we open up tomorrow. But Nvidia was down 0.6% today. Intel down again 0.6%. So just a weird day in the market considering all the things that were going on with my broker personally. But you know, because of that, I didn't really follow the market that closely today because there really was no point for me. It was just having a hard time getting data and also getting options filled. But I was able to get into some plays today. So I'll talk about those. And I made a lot of plays today, actually, so a good variety this week of plays. So let's get right into it. So if you don't know from my prior videos, you know I have a 73 strike put on AMD that I placed last week. I sold that put that expires this Friday. So right now we're looking pretty good, even though AMD dipped today by a little bit, we're still very far away from being tested. I mean, my put is at 73. AMD closed around 81 and some change, so I'm not too worried about that. We only have three more trading days in the market until my option expires, so hopefully I can ride it to max profit. And I did sell that one for $35 in premium. But today, once I saw this kind of sell off in the morning, right around this point, because I wasn't going to make the same mistake I did yesterday, I was fortunate in that I almost caught the dip perfectly today. So I did open up another cash get put on AMD that expires this Friday, but this time I opened it at the 75 strike price. So let's take a look at the options chain here because getting in at 73 again wasn't a good return on my risk, but selling a put for the weekly, meaning this Friday at 75, I actually ended up selling it for $13 in premium. And as you can see, we actually closed at $13 in premium. So I'm really break even right now, but I'm not too concerned about it again. I have about a $6 buffer between where my strike is and where the share price is. So as long as we stay above 75 on Friday, end of day, which I think we will, I'll collect max profit hopefully on this option as well. So just to recap, currently I have two options or two puts, I should say, to be more specific, that I sold on AMD that expired this Friday at one at the 75 strike and one at the 73 strike. And if both expire worthless, I will collect a total of $48 in max profit. So not too shabby. Now let's take a look at space because that was not looking too hot today for me. So space had another red day today. Again, just to recap, I own 200 shares of space at a cost basis of $90 each. And then I sold covered calls on space yesterday. I sold two of them to cover my 200 shares. Again, at the 19 strike, I didn't collect a lot of premium. Admittedly, I will you know, fully admit that I could have gotten a better deal, but I sold those covered calls for $22 in premium each. And then I actually ended up making another play on space at the end of the day today, but I'll talk about that at the end of the video. But again, my covered calls are pretty secure because it's nowhere close to $19 right now. It's, it's about 17 and some change. But on the flip side, I'm losing more money on my shares because you know we are below $19. So let's say we're at 17.69 right now. So I own them at 19. So I'm currently losing $1.31 per share times 200 shares. So I'm actually down $262 in terms of my, my shares for space. But if my covered calls expire worthless, I'll have a max profit of $44 this week. 
But like I said, I did open up another play on space, but stay tuned to the end of the video because it'll make a little bit more sense there. And so I still had a little bit more dry powder left. And if you watch my videos from the past week or so, you know I mentioned silver. And also over the weekend, it was kind of leaked or news came out that Warren Buffett invested in gold tickers. So silver along with gold is a commodity. People like to play it right now because it's a hedge against inflation. So I actually wanted to be a part of the silver surfer gang. So I actually did end up opening two cash grip puts on silver. I didn't catch the dip right here, which would have been the perfect scenario, but I did catch it right around this area because I didn't know if we were going to dip further because as you can see, we opened up green on silver, but we started dipping pretty heavily within the first about hour. So I didn't know if it was going to be a red day for silver, but once I saw that we were rebounding back, I said, you know what, this might now be a good time to get into silver, even though we were still a little bit green compared to where we opened yesterday. But as you can see, we kind of rallied and then traded sideways all day. So that worked out well for me because I opened these positions around, I would say around 11 a.m., right around this area here. But taking a look at the options chain, I sold two cash grid puts on the silver, the iShare Silver Trust, and I sold them at 2250. I wanted to be a little bit careful because I haven't ever played silver before. I know there's a lot of hype around it, so you know my feelings on hype stocks. So I wanted to play a little safe, and I sold these for $5 each in premium. You can see they're currently worth $4, so I'm up $1 per contract, so a total of $2 since I sold two contracts. But I'm feeling pretty good about these. Hopefully I can ride these out to max profit as well because they expire on Friday. But so currently I own options on AMD, Silver, and Space or Virgin Galactic. And I also own 200 shares of Virgin Galactic. I had just a few bucks left over. So rather than letting it sit in my account, Plus, at the time, I was able to get fills, so who knows if my broker is going to let me play options tomorrow or, you know, provide me with data tomorrow. So I figured I should at least take advantage of it while I could. Like I said, I had a few bucks left over, so I went back to space. And one of the reasons why I like space is, yes, I admit it's a little bit of a hype stock or meme stock, but I like it because the share price is rather low. So whenever I have a few bucks left over for my options, I can like to open up a far out of the money put on space because you know why not making one dollar is better than making no dollars for that money that I have left over right so I had about I had a little over twelve hundred dollars sitting in my account left over from my plays that I just put on for the week so far and I figured you know what why don't I get a twelve dollar put or a twelve strike put on Virgin Galactic and I was able to actually sell it for two dollars so some Taco Bell money there I'm already profitable because it's only trading for one dollar now so you know, again, I can get um, Taco Tuesdays tonight. But those are my plays for the whole week so far. So I'm completely tapped out. I have plays on AMD, which is a semiconductor stock. I have plays on silver, which is a commodity, a hedge against inflation. I have plays on space or Virgin Galactic, which is basically a meme stock that wants to go to the moon, you know, almost literally. And that's about it. So very well diversified, I will say. And I would, th I would say this is actually the most number of concurrent trades that I have had on at any given time so far. I like to keep my number of trades kind of small because it's easier for me to keep track of them and manage them. You know, I will have multiple contracts open on trades, but to have multiple tickers, have a combination of covered calls and cash grid puts and owning shares at the same time, I have never done this before so far so it's kind of going to be a little bit of an interesting week going to keep it exciting even if my broker chooses not to show me data but that was my trading day for today i mean let's just take a look at some of these trading view charts here so space here again you can see it's just slowly dipping down so we'll have to wait and see where the bottom is i saw some headlines today that there is some kind of hopefully good news in the works for space in the coming months in terms of FAA regulations and hopefully passing them and kind of new uh, spaceships or new airplanes that are in the works. So hopefully space gets a, gets a nice bump. I really don't want to end up bag holding shares at 19. You know, we're not that far away and space does like to move a lot. I mean, because you can see space moved 2.4% today, unfortunately in the red, but we'll have to keep an eye on that. Hopefully I don't take an L or bag hold space, but I'm not too worried about it. Let's take a look at silver. So silver, you know, from the past few days it had a pretty big dip but it looks like we're rallying back so that's why i got into silver because i wanted to be a part of this rally and hopefully that 
my cash secured puts will expire worthless. And then lastly, AMD. I mean, does anything more need to be said about AMD? It's been trading flat for the past few days, which is good for me. It's good for Theta Gang because even if the stock trades flat, time still eats away at the premiums, so I can collect max profit. But you know, AMD has been pretty stable in the low 80s. So, you know, initially I was worried that AMD was gonna have a pullback at some point, maybe fill these gaps. But I'm not too concerned right now, at least in the short term. So maybe we'll look into getting into some more AMD plays next week. Let's take a look at Micron. You know, this has been crazy, this sell-off in Micron. And I think a part of it is because some news came out and analysts were downgrading the stock and the future just didn't seem very good for whatever reason in terms of Micron's business of selling memory chips. However, the one silver lining is I did see an article today that Micron is actually selling or supplying NVIDIA with the memory chips for their products. So in theory, I mean, one could assume that if NVIDIA does well, then they would kind of take Micron along with it. So we'll see, you know, NVIDIA's Earnings are actually currently happening as we speak. So we'll have to see how we open up tomorrow in NVIDIA. I'm predicting that there's gonna be another gap up, but then it'll be more interesting to see if Micron rallies along with NVIDIA as well. But I wouldn't hold my hat on it, but just something interesting to keep an eye on tomorrow morning when the market opens. As always, if you're not in the Discord server already, make sure you get in there while it's still free. If you have any questions or comments, post them in Discord or leave them in the YouTube comment section below. And as always, happy trading.